Yo, yo, welcome to the Culture Shock Show where we talk about everything in hip hop culture on the mic and off. Brand man Sean, how you feeling, man? Good, good, man. What's up with you, Russ B? I'm good, man. I'm your host, Russ B. Welcome to the show. Let's let's jump into some of the most exclusive topics going on in the culture. Exclusive topics, all right. Yeah, man. What we got? So yeah, um, Mac Miller, you know, Apple, Google Maps, they both are paying homage to Mac Miller and pretty much naming Blue Slide Park um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At, they're naming it after him. So anytime you drive past there or whatever and you see him on the on the Google Maps, that'll pop up, which I think is good. Um, Mac Miller is, is, in my opinion, you know, you look at Eminem, who's a white rapper, um, and I feel like there's been a lot of conversations about white rappers um, and I think Mac Miller is on the higher spectrum of that category. And, and, and I think, you know, he's somebody who was, was, you know, he might've seen, got a bit of criticism early on, but I think over time he really proved that he was dedicated to the culture and he was somebody that, you know, we could all respect as, you know, one of our own almost, you know? So I think that's respectable. And I think there's been a lot of conversation about, you know, black rappers versus white rappers and, 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 you know, a culture vulture has been a term that's been used a lot, thrown around a lot. So I really wanted to get, you know, your perspective on like, what makes a white rapper valid in hip hop culture? Yeah. And what makes a hip, uh, a white rapper a uh, culture vulture? <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, I think, it, I think it's super dope that just, that they did it in the first place. The fact that Google Maps and Apple did that, I thought that was interesting. I wonder if they came together, they actually discussed it, or one of them came up with the idea, the other one copied. Either way it goes, or something dope. Maybe, you know, maybe somebody behind the scenes probably got in, in somebody's ear on both sides and, and thought that it would be dope as a tribute. However that came together, I thought just stuff, little stuff like that is always cool to, to pay tribute because Matt Miller has always been somebody that's just been respected. Even if you don't know him, heavily lyrically or just musically just the way he's carried himself has always just been one of those you know just one of those personas that's heavily respected in the game from both sides you know what whether he's white or not and i always, always love people like that 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 kind of carry themselves with good energy you know what i mean right and that let, it's unfortunate that he passed man i'm so young for sure yeah, for sure man. so let's step away Let's step away from the rappers, right? And let's let's just talk about in general race and hip hop. We we've obviously been seeing the Yes Jules conversation that's going on. Um, <laughs> you know, she, she she went on uh It's Biscuit and, and Murder Mook show. She um, you know, in the past has been uh pinned a lot of different um titles, one being that a, a culture vulture. What yeah. what is the determining factor that separates, you know, a person that, you know, racially doesn't, ethnically doesn't, um, you know, hold the the certain characteristics that you would normally think are are in hip hop, which which I really feel like in 2019 there are no real uh, characteristics that I feel like are are hip hop any anymore. Um, but obviously, you know, this is black music you know or at least it was it was uh started as that so when you know different people from other cultures do come in and in, into the culture and, and make their money people are going to have their questions you know what i'm saying so yeah what, what what is the distinguishing point you know what what separates it from you know a mac miller who we can all accept and we can all say, you know, this guy is, is, is accepted versus a yes, Jules, who, um, you know, obviously is not very uh, accepted the way Mac Miller is. Man, um, at the end of the day, bro, like, it's, it's all coming down to respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, because Mac Miller, as I say, he's always carried himself as somebody respectable in the game. He's always shown respect for the culture, even when you look at Michael Moore, right? He always bigged up the culture show. He studied it. Somebody like Yes Jules, they've never really shown that. And they've always victimized themselves when people show any kind of animosity towards them. So yeah. that's like a prime example of somebody that's like an ally that could come in. 
they, they respect the culture. As a matter of fact, that when I did an interview with Wendy Day, one of the things she talked about how she had a lot of pushback, white women coming to hip hop, right? But at the end of the day, she she paid her dues. She showed that she was there. She studied culture. She helped people out, worked her way up. And that's the difference between how is Jules, you know, she kind of finessed her way up into the game. I can't can't knock anybody taking advantage of the opportunities, but when people call you out for your lack of respect on things, you can't be, look at yourself as a victim. So that's like, that's one thing. They, they be victimizing themselves and they don't show any understanding of, of the culture or any respect for the culture or people who have paved the way for them, right? Then yeah. you got other artists that is even like Post Malone, man. Like at the end of the day, acknowledge the fact that this is the way you dress, this is the way you look, this is the way you acted. Whether it was your idea or not, it might've been your management, but you, you leveraged hip hop and black culture for your image for a given period of time. So when you come and then when you double back and make all these comments against hip hop, right? People let it pass because of your talent, you know, just, just kind of like how they let R. Kelly pass because of his talent for a given period of time. But at the end of the day, just just show respect for, for what it is. And it's not even like somebody's gonna make, like hold it against you. Like, cause yeah. you got talent, y'all got opportunities, y'all are making moves, no one cares. At the end of the day, all they want to is the acknowledgement that it happened, and that's because everybody's trying to prevent white, basically white flight into the game and taking over the culture and white and whitewashing every single thing that already existed, all the work that we we did. Just like what happened to rock and roll, right? People think of rock and roll as a white genre because white it became popular, white people took it over, and now that's that's a white genre, right? House, like all these things that we create. When people come in and they don't give acknowledgement of what existed, then like they're a threat. Like they're, they're, they're and they're picking off. And when you're picking pieces of the game, monetizing the game, and not showing respect, all you all you are is a vulture, point blank. And I'm not saying Coach Post Malone is a culture vulture, but there's been some culture vulture tendencies at the time. Yes, Jules is a culture vulture from everything that I've seen in, in and out. Yeah, I think I think it really comes down to intent like i think that's the the main thing i think there's some guys that get into the culture because just like us they would they were you know into it from a young age and it, it was just like it was yeah. it was it was a part of them you know and then you get other guys who see it as a financial opportunity and things like that and i think that happens like all across the board you know if like you remember in the mid 2000s when pharrell really was was kicking stuff off and everybody wanted to be like a skater but all the real yes. skating, and, and then Lupe came out with Kick Push, and everybody was like, yo, like, skating was the thing, but the real skaters was like, yo, like, what are y'all doing? Like, this this isn't, like, it's, it's deeper than a, a Bape hoodie. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. Yeah, perfect. So, That's a perfect example. I'm glad you said that, bro, because culture, like, there's, it's not just black culture. There's so many cultures to vulture, bro. Like, there's so many people, especially in today. We got artists or other people, just people in general, trying to cap off of a niche audience. Yeah. People are looking for niches, and you, like you got people finding cultures, and they're trying to flip flip that culture. Whether it's game culture, whether it's gang culture, whether right. it's black culture, skater, whatever. Everybody's trying to flip a culture these days, and they're not putting in the work to be a part of that community in the first place. So right. I, I get it, and it's like that with everything. Like even today, like uh podcasting is cool so there'll be some guys on here who aren't really committed to hip-hop you know who might become a hip-hop podcaster and they not really even they just see it as a financial game and then that's going to dilute the entire culture that's going to so that's really where the cautiousness is is it's like do you really care or are you just trying to make money because when you're just trying to make money that's when the culture becomes diluted everybody didn't hate that vanilla ice was a white rapper they hated that it was so evident that he didn't really care about hip hop and hip hop just was blowing up and you just had the marketing dollars to, to, to really capitalize and, and make this song and do what you need to do. That was yep. the problem. It, it was never his skin. So when you get an Eminem who's, you know, growing up around black people, he raps better than black people. He, he's, he's, he's really, he loves hip hop just like a black person. We don't have a problem. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we, we understand that the respect and the love for the culture is no different from us. But when, when we feel like you're kind of just in it, and, and that's kind of my problem with like people calling Leo Cohen a, a, a culture vulture. 
because I'm not really convinced Lior doesn't care about hip hop. I have a hard time seeing somebody that's been in the game for 40 years, 30 years, you know, well before, you know, we was even born. He's been in this game forever. And I just feel like, you know, he could have gotten money doing whatever else. You know what I'm saying? Like who spends 40 years in 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 this in in one culture that they're not particularly interested in? You hey, know what man, I'm saying? Some people, some people bleed green. If they're like they're just true and blue entrepreneurs, where they like, hey, I know how to get this check over here, and I'm gonna keep blowing up and getting that check over here. I'm sure he has money in other places, but I'm not saying that just to say that I think Leor is. I honestly don't know because I don't know enough about him. Like I, I know his history personally, but as far as why he gets called one, I don't. I honestly don't get that. Get, I'm, get that. I'm, I'm a, heard like specific reason that he gets called one. You know what I mean? People right. like damn, if he don't care about the culture. But I don't. See, I've never heard of an example. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why people call Leo our culture vulture. Because okay. he's a 60-year-old white man. So people look at him, and he's out promoting, like, back in his 300 days, he's out promoting, like, Young Thug or Day Day. And they like, man, this old white dude is not driving around listening to Young Thug. You know what I'm saying? And here's my thing with that. It's like, we're all going to get old one day. So, yeah, you know, we in our 20s, music is 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 made for us right now. But there might be a time when we 50 and the music ain't necessarily created for us in mind. But we might still want to be a part of the music business and we might still have a perspective on what's going on, even though that's not our first uh, pick when we put on. What about Dame, though? Dame never called, like, but Dame had been calling him a culture vulture beforehand. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know. I would have to hear more on that. But, but even Dame did an apology, which is weird. I don't even know what that's about. But like, let's bring this back to this Yes, Jewel situation, though, because this man, Murder Moot, was wilding. Right? Yeah. You told me. I hadn't heard this. Like, you said uh, Murder Moot came out and said that he was just doing it for the views. But does that make it better for you? Nah, it, it absolutely doesn't. It's uh, This is really like kind of what we had spoke about before about just like the attention hoarding and the downside of it. I think this is a perfect example of like, you did more damage than, than you did good for yourself because uh, the whole point of a podcast is, is credibility. And if you up there just kind of proving that you not a credible source <clears throat> or that you not, don't really have like a, a backbone to really say the the things you need to say in the in the time period given to Sam, people aren't going to listen to you. You know, people people. The whole point of media <laughs> is for when a Yes Jules or anybody or R Kelly does an interview. The point is to get everybody who ever views this the information that they want to know. Mm. So when you get somebody where people want to know information. It's very important that you don't let the person control the interview. You don't let uh, those main points get lost, you know, and and you you rationalize them in a way where everybody feels like you've done a successful job. That's the whole point of of of, of a, a, an interview in the first place. So when you that's a very sound, logical, ex- level-headed explanation for me. I just think that shit was all trash, bro. It was trash. I, I couldn't believe, like, coming up, at being a young boy, listening to Murder Moot, Battle Freestyles, and stuff like that, I couldn't believe that this is the same dude, and the way he was coming off, and the way he was encouraging and enabling, and almost just in defending her, even at points that she didn't defend. There still some points where she was like, yo, no, nah, not exactly. And she was like, no, nah, I'm white. Like, he was like, you white? No, you are not. Like, you are not white. She was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm white. Like, no, you ain't white. He like, was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you, when you, once you sacrifice, like, your respect for the clout, like, that's when it starts to, you lose the credit. Like, you, now you're, you're moving on a different time, time period. That's when that whole trolling thing, like, it, it goes out the water. You have to literally continue to do that type of shit just to keep attention. And that shit's short lived. Like, so I don't think that's the right space for Buddy. He need to figure out a different platform because, like that, like Jules is coming at it. two very well respected black women, the black queens, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that came out, that came up for real, for real, in terms of hustling their ways up. It's a lot of great white women um, in, in hip hop. They are. But 
yes, Jules for one is party culture, not hip hop culture. And people don't understand there's a difference between party culture and hip hop culture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like you attacking them, you know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't do you any good. Just throwing those names, trying to say that they're jealous of you and things like that. And there's a lot of other what things that Jules got going on as far as, you know, rumors and things like that, as far as how she gets in the game and how she made her way up the ladder. I don't really know those kind of details. I'm not going to get into those alleged ac accusations of sleeping your way up to the top and all that stuff. But right. at the same time, when you got a certain past or certain lack of credibility in certain spaces, you got to tread, tread water. You know what I'm saying? Like You can't yeah. just go, go out there yeah. with people. And and I think that's the problem. Like when when a when a yes Jules could go on these platforms and speak wrong about Karen, that that's why she feels that way. Because there's mm -hmm. not enough of us correcting that. You know what I'm saying? So that that episode was like the perfect example of, and this is why she feels the right to even say some outlandish shit. Because in reality, her and Karen are nowhere near the same. They're not on in the same world, really. That is fair of like of, of they're not in the same world, really. But because y'all done allowed her to think that she thinks that like this is like a you know me versus her, her versus her type of thing. So it's like nah, Karen. Karen's on a whole. Karen's on a whole different level, man. You talking about somebody who's worked on presidential campaigns, man? Like you talking about somebody. Exactly. You know, a black woman from from I believe New Jersey, you know, the hood. Like hey, different. My people in North New Jersey. Yeah. But, uh, I all right. Keep it to keep it real, man. Like that was like a perfect image of what so many black women have told me, which is they hate how black men enable white women to talk greasy and down on black men. But Black men apparently want black women to uphold them and call them king and things like that. But a lot, a lot of black women feel like they're not being treated as queens, right? We, yeah. we, we, these other women, and we allow them, we enable them, and all that kind of stuff. And like, I get it. And I, and I, and I, and I, when I see moments like that, at the end of the day, that goes back to even if it was you were just trying to do something for clout, that isn't one of those things you can do for clout. There, there's some things where integrity shouldn't allow you to do and i don't know i don't know what his integrity or where his value is like everybody has different versions of those but there's certain things that i won't do even if i know it'll blow me up or give me certain views because at the end of the day like i got certain things that are more meaningful than a quick little pop in in the you know view count on youtube you know what I'm saying? And, and, and i'm gonna be real with you man like certain people like I heard Joe say on, on a podcast, like, everybody don't need a podcast. Everybody don't need a platform. And if, if everybody do have a platform, make sure your platform is something that you well-versed in. Like, if, like, I'm not listening to no Murder Mook podcast, no no It's Biscuit podcast. For real. I didn't know he had a podcast, so I guess it would. I, like, if I'm going to listen to Murder Mook talk about anything, it's really just going to be, like, battle rapping or basketball or something. I don't really care to hear, like, his angles on, like, anything – particularly like important you know what i'm saying like for real and it's like <laughs> for real. And especially with biscuit bro biscuit is like biscuit is a funny dude man he's somebody that i just want to go on instagram and and i enjoy his content i really do i just i laugh at him and he's funny he's really a funny guy but he's uh, again he's not somebody who i didn't even realize they had a podcast and i'm curious to who watches it because it's like these is not people that I would ever consider like really listening to, to an hour, two hours, up to three hours of content from to me. That's that's ludicrous. So, Biscuit, that's the black dude who was there. B uh, Biscuit was the other black dude who. And then who's the white guy? Uh, he, I don't really know who he is. He had, they they had some rum on the table, and he's like a brand ambassador or something like that for that company. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, I don't I don't know what made him choose these <laughs> two people. I guess he just looked at the Instagram following and said, hey, let's do it. But nah, this is like, nah, nah, man. Biscuit is not somebody that I would be listening to for two, three hours. To me, that's crazy. And it's and Murder Mook as well. Like, now, you, you talk about, like, a Nori. Nori is different. Nori, Nori is deep, bro. 
Nori's a beast at the interviewing, the the radio, all that stuff, man. He a beast. Different. He a beast. Different. He 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 has his flaws, but he's he's a beast. And speaking of white people, I know you had Yellow Wolf as a topic that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, right? yeah. So I guess we get all that stuff out the way, man. Right? Yeah. What what did you think about Yellow Yellow Wolf's did this? Oh, I I really felt indifferent towards it. I I really thought um. Yellow Wolf overall has kind of been an artist I've always felt indifferent about. I never really heard a Yellow Wolf song that I've particularly liked, but I, I've also really? never really, yeah, I, I never really been, I never really done like a real strong deep dive into his catalog or anything like that. Um, but the, the record was cool. The record was cool. And I feel like, you know, um, him, the Machine Gun Kellys, you know, I, I think they're cool, but they don't serve my demographic or, and what I'm trying to listen to. So, um, but I, I definitely, I, I respect his perspective, you know, on 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 how he feels about the climate and all of that. All right, well, first, I, like, I wouldn't consider myself a Yellow Wolf stand, but I did appreciate, like, I, when I first heard Yellow Wolf, man, I remember being, like, back on, at Georgia Southern University. I didn't go there. I was, like, visiting some homies and truck music that came out not long before that. This had to be like 2010 or something like that. Trunk music had some tracks, bro. Like that project had some tracks. Bro. I was like, oh, I rock with this dude. But I haven't followed him heavy. I remember when he started to rebrand and, and bring the cowboy thing and the whole, it was more so like an honor in his parents. Apparently that was kind of the culture he grew up in, something similar and all that stuff. So I respected that he was staying true to and integrating more of where he came from versus trying to like pander to black people, you know what I mean, or take too much of that image. He always felt like he was authentic in what he was doing. And right. I, I, felt, I felt similar about MGK and stuff like that but um, as well, but not to the extent that uh, Yellow Wolf had been. My thing about that this when I first heard it, I thought it was kind of whack, honestly. Like, I, didn't, I just heard, like, the second half of the song. Cause, and then when I say whack, I'm just talking about the actual flow, I couldn't, I wasn't liking how things got delivered. I listened back again, started from the beginning. And it seems like he's taking shots on a lot of a lot, a lot of people, like people that I don't even know and understand, but it sounds like he's taking shots the entire song. It right. wasn't just directed at those people. Obviously it's a play to get project uh, views for his uh, upcoming project and everything. But I, I I would like to see Post Malone reply. I would like to see M MGK reply. I know Post did reply like on Twitter, stuff like mm -hmm. that. But that's, you know, I don't, I don't really care. You know, like of course, I, I, overall, I don't care about the beef, but I think it'll be interesting to to actually see an uh, actual battle of of lyrics. That part I can always appreciate, and I love. And he did have a lot of dope flows. I take the fact that it was whack back back. It didn't like impress me heavily. Yeah. But he did had a, he had a lot of dope flows. I don't understand the beef though. I really don't understand because it don't even seem like these white boys know each other in terms of like I don't see them together. It doesn't seem like anyone has done anybody super wrong. But right. apparently there's this whole there's some kind of beef going on like in right. the white right underbelly <laughs> that I don't <laughs> that I don't know about, bro. Apparently. Yeah, I I think I think overall though one thing of Yellow Wolf I, I could say is that he he can rap, you know. Um, you know, he definitely is a lyrical dude. And I, I think in general, it's it's not really, they're not really giving a respect as far as like, I, I do think as far as from a technical aspect, white rappers usually like uh, stereotypically do really hold the, the, the technical aspects of, of rap to a high regard and, and really try to be like a very traditionally lyrical, uh, mm -hmm. you know, approach and rapper. So, so in that respect, I do really respect that. Um, about white rappers, but I, I think you know that's enough on on that topic. Ow.